All right, folks, welcome to the 36th episode of Selling Cars at Grinding Corp Garage. And today we have something very, very nice. What do you say? Like a boss? Like a boss? Like a boss. <laughs> <laughs> Nineteen ninety-two uh, Land Cruiser seventy-eight in all original paint, all original condition, with the exemption of couple of modifications. And uh, here we go. Um, paint is absolutely beautiful. Uh, Land Cruiser badge shows just a little tiny pitting on it on the top, but barely noticeable. Got a little stone chip. Got a little scratch on the top of the fender, very tiny, can barely be seen. When we come towards the back of the car, the front fender is just beautiful, very nice, very clean. You got a little stone chip touched up, not by me, uh, right here. Uh, brand new mud flaps, brand new side steps. Uh, I mean, side steps been powder coated in the aluminum silver with gloss clear on top. You can dance your heel on it, whatever. You're not gonna scratch it. It'll take a hammer to take this finish off and it'll stay like that forever. I did the uh, powder coated wheels in slightly different color to make sure that it doesn't look like a rattle can job. Um, powder coat as well, all five wheels. Brand new 32 inch uh, 11 and a half B of GKO2s. Uh, five wheels, five tires, about a couple thousand dollars. Uh, front brakes are done, front hubs are greased with a Sinopec high molly grease. I really like that grease. Uh, brand new back, back gnarly brake pads, machine rotors. Um, stops really, really nice as you will be able to see in the video. Really nice, very nice pedal feel. Brake fluids flushed on all four corners. Brand new brake fluid in there. Uh, there we go. So uh, the paint is very, very nice, very glossy, beautiful. No swirls. Factory orange peel, really nice, very clean. It's a reflection. I get so many compliments on this car, man, especially from the Hispanic community, man. They love it, they love it. Beautiful. Uh, back door is beautiful, brand new, brand new condition. Got a couple of stone chips right here. One, two, three, four, so to say. Because the rocks, you know, from the front wheel, they fly back and hit this. Uh, when we come towards the back, plastic is in new condition. Rubber seals are in nine out of 10, I'd say. Eight to nine out of 10, they're really nice. Uh, very clean for 28 years. They don't dry it they don't crack they're not dry rotten so is this window seal very nice and rubbery very soft um, fender rubber is uh, is in good shape um, the rear plastic bumper got a couple of scuffs right here one two barely seen I did dress them up a little bit in the uh, back to black type of deal I use Ardex, very nice, good stuff. It's a little sticky when you put Ardex, but it stays there for a while. Uh, the rear light is in excellent condition. The hinge covers are excellent condition. Badging, badging is in, I'd say nine out of 10 condition. Uh, we do have a little bit of fade right here. That's very normal. Uh, overall, the rear license plate, uh, light bracket is uh or scoop is in very good condition the chrome starts to show super minor fade that barely unnoticeable to uh, uh an average person uh, this powder coated same this is powder coated satin black uh to give it a new fresh look uh brand new tire brand new wheel refinished um a little bit more fade right here um just because the water runs down, you know, and uh, some rains in Japan might be just a little bit more toxic than the rains in Florida. 
uh, you know, um, uh, the um, the side uh, plastic of the bumper is in very good condition. I don't see any scratches or scuffing. Um, the rear uh, right quarter is in new condition. So is the fender flare. Glass is in amazing condition. Glass is just dead on reflection. Even the front windshield, I mean, barely shows anywhere. I've seen cars with 30,000 miles that are worn windshields, you know, that have worn windshields, you know, sand blasting and rocks and this. This thing's been driven definitely with low speed. You can tell that there is absolutely, the front windshield is amazing condition, like new. Just, I mean, if you want to look for something, you will find it, but great shape, great shape. So uh, the fender flare rubber becomes a little bit sticky, you know, with years, it becomes a little softy softy. And it does show a little crack right here and right here. But guess what, the brand new set Oh, fender flare rubber from Toyota is included with the sale. It's in the box. Whenever you decide to change them, you change them. Another interesting thing about the flares, uh, they are they have never been off the car. There's a little rivet right here that you have to drill out. Uh, just only one rivet, kind of a, it's kind of a seal. Uh, basically, when you drill it out, it opens out in the, uh, I think, M4, or M6 opening for a bolt. You just put the bolt right back in. Um, there are several bolts in the rivet, so all the flares have that specific rivet. Uh, mud flaps, they come with the uh, original mud flaps. They have that metal bracket inside them built in, and uh, it is starts to corrode with time and it swells up the mud flap, looks really crappy. So I bought a brand new set of mud flaps all for it to make it look uh, like it should. Uh, stainless hardware, new mud flap brackets, all four corners. Uh, that's all done up. Uh, when we come towards the right uh, rear door, it's in excellent condition. Um, the front door has a little bit of chipping right here, keychain chipping. Basically, somebody had a very nice keychain that was every time you put the key, it will touch the door. I mean, I polished out as much as I can. There is a very uh, ugly touch up right here. There is some ugly touch up right here, but it's basically unnoticeable. It's barely noticeable. What is noticeable is that there is this uh, scuff right here. It's not down to the metal. It's just down to the either silver paint or the primer. It's been touched up when I was polishing the car, it came off. So it's up to you how you're gonna address that. Uh, other than that, the front door after 28 years looks better than uh, most three year old leases in America. All right, let's continue. Front fender is in excellent condition, apart, apart from some uh, airstrike. Uh, from here, you know, uh, birds in Florida pretty much can do some damage. Well, that's that's a water spot. Or maybe some bird as well. Who knows? Uh, yeah, our birdies are organic. Imagine a Japanese pelican having some food in the Fukushima restaurant. They can do some damage. So here it is. Again, uh, a little bit of fade on the front grill, uh, just from water running down the hood, uh, and some fade on the uh, on the bumper corners. Very minor, very minor. Um, turn signals are in excellent condition. Uh, two stone chips right here, uh, and uh, two stone chips on the hood. I see one and two. Two stone chips on the hood in 28 years of use. Uh, this particular bar is original Toyota accessory. Uh, dealer installed option. So are the lights. Lights are turned in by the switch, factory switch, Coito. Uh, they are refinished with stainless hardware. Took some time to polish this. This is stainless as well. 
Uh, one more thing to note. Um, there is a scratch right here in the windshield wiper cowl. This particular cowl uh, got scratched somewhere in the port or um, basically somebody played with windshield wipers and there are, there are linkages in there that are connected through plastic grommets, so to say. And one came loose and somebody scratched, scratched this uh, with a windshield wiper. Obviously it's all fixed, you know, I repaired that. Basically nothing to repair, just grease it and snap it back on. But this is powder coated. They're all powdered by Glory, same people who did that, the rest of the powder coating. So is the rear wiper, everything works on this truck. Uh, also, there is a scratch on the roof uh, that I'm going to show you right now. Roof is in very good condition. And here it is. You can see that scratch right there. I bought the truck without the scratch, so it happened by the transporter or in the port. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you just how glossy the paint is, kind of go around and show you in detail. Look how beautiful that is. This is some caca. There you go. So again, there it is. Stone chip, scratch. Everything looks really nice. Really nice, very clean. Very nice and clean. Clean. Look at the paint. It's gorgeous. Tell you one thing. You find me a cleaner 78. I'll sell you I'll send you a hundred bucks in an envelope one bill you know why because you want cleaner and more original unmolested example unpainted example Beautiful, just a reflection. The car is a reflection. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and pop the hood and show you how nice the engine cranks. And we'll talk about what's underneath of it. Let's listen to it. Wave sound.
very very healthy all right so i'm going to go ahead and uh, shut it off and we'll talk about the motor in general all right 12t engine when i bought the car the head was blown uh, so i decided to do the work myself if you were uh, to do some work like that somewhere else it will cost you about so to say five thousand dollars plus minus all right let's start why diesel heads crack on older diesels mercedes is not exemption they crack as well especially turbo diesels without intercooler um, the reason for that is the diesel uh, fuel burns a lot slower than gas so fuel is still burning when the cylinder is going down that creates the exhaust manifold is very hot creates it it heats it up a great amount uh, and it heats up the hot side of the turbo as well when all that happens the cold side of the turbo heats up as well it's, it's very hot indeed you can barely touch that thing uh, and if you never felt what a uh, unintercooled uh, turbo gas feels like on a warm motor uh, all you need to do is uh, get your wife's hair dryer turn it on hot and uh, point it directly in your face that's what it feels like uh, so the motor doesn't feel that happy either uh, so what can be done to make it happier first of all you want to get those hot gases get them out of the pipe as soon as possible um, which basically means installing a very good exhaust so flange down or down pipe down I have two and a half inch mandrel bent very nice high quality exhaust I mean it all depends on the master who do it, who do it for you I've seen some ugly work my master's work is very good uh, through a straight through magna flow muffler uh, I'm very happy with it uh, basically it's a straight through you can see through it like a scope um, but it muffles the car very nicely it doesn't have that squeaky kind of unmuffled fart of a four-cylinder um, again uh, how can we disperse of the heat quicker down that pipe the exhaust manifold got ceramic coated the hot side of the turbo got ceramic coated all the heat shields got ceramic coated so we're trying to keep as much heat out of the head and everything down that pipe everything down that pipe uh, and gen 2 Toyota a uh, stronger high nickel head uh, is installed uh, EGR is removed which is another uh, source of excessive heat basically sending down hot gases into the intake is no fun you know I can uh, come up a couple of things but uh, we all understand how not happy that motor feels when you send diesel gases straight back into the intake the valves get uh, very cloggy it's not a good thing and again it creates extra heat extra heat extra heat butter five la valves are removed uh, diesel does not run by the uh, uh, angle of the throttle uh, valve but by the amount of fuel you introduce to the system it sucks as much as it wants and the performance increased with those mods it increased greatly and we dropped exhaust gas temperature significantly as well uh, I run the red line water water weather in here uh, which uh, is a significant uh, heat transfer agent it says right on the can reduces head temperature uh, fan clutch is serviced with a silicone 6000 some people go up to all the way up to 10,000 uh, thick oil silicone oil but I decided to stay with 6000 and we run a made in Japan uh, 82 degrees thermostat and what I also like to do is I like to drill three holes in it just to uh, create a little extra flow 
of fluid when the engine is shut down in between, you know, the, for a heat transfer and a little flow. So in result, when you're doing uh, near 70 miles per hour in this truck on Florida flats, your temperature doesn't go above half. And I'm very happy with that. Uh, the main upgrade you can do to this motor that will solve all the issues are known to men uh, is to install an intercooler. Imagine that hair dryer in your face it doesn't feel too good. So intercooler is like turning that hair dryer into cold mode. You'll be like, yeah, that's good. So that's how that motor is going to feel. It's going to feel very happy, very good. The L series engines are known for their robust bottom ends. And when I took the head off, I was impressed how nice and clean uh, the pistons and the cylinders were, uh, cylinders walls were, cylinder walls had bone, like it came from the factory, not 75,000 miles ago, but a 5,000 miles ago. I was very impressed. Timing belts done, all the rollers are done, all the bearings are greased. Brand new AC Denso compressor that would not, that was not cheap. Uh, some hoses, these hoses are brand new. Some other vacuum hoses I bought from Toyota. Uh, power steering is flushed. Uh, now let's talk about some other maintenance that's been done to it. Uh, brand new uh, Donaldson air filter. Brand new Don Donaldson uh, fuel filter. Um, Mali oil filter. I run Mobile One in it. Uh, do, do change oil at about every 3,000 miles, especially on diesels. Uh, don't be cheap, the oil is cheap, uh, diesel repairs are not. Um, brand new battery, um, Valvoline 8100, 80, I think, synthetic, full synthetic fluid, front axle, rear axle, transfer box, and Valvoline uh, Dextron, we got full synthetic, I really like that fluid cheap and it's good uh, in the automatic tranny tranny is flushed with four gallons of it I really like to flush it until I make sure that the clean fluid comes out doing a partial on the tranny is like a uh, having a bucket full of crap and getting rid of a third of it diluting it with water and then putting your face into it tranny doesn't feel great on the partial as well so uh, it's all nicely maintained very good, you know, fades like this. You can address, the grill is about 350 bucks. It's up for a new owner to decide. My friend from Venezuela, to whom I sold my first truck actually, replaced all the chrome, spent about two grand, placed the bumpers, rear plastic side corners, rear chrome halves, front bumper grill. This truck is top notch, top notch. So, uh, and this will be absolutely museum. It all depends what you want to do with it. Uh, as I said again, I've never seen, and I had a few, I've never seen as clean as this one. And I'm sure you will not as well, unless you come upon miracles. And let's be honest, how often do miracles happen? So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and show you some things about the interior, how easy it is to access and get out of and some features. All right, sit in position. Uh, what I like to do is uh, to lift the steering wheel up when exiting or entering and that helps a little bit. So I'm sitting very comfortably. Then I like to lift it down a little bit and lower it down. Uh, very nice, plenty of room. I'm wearing a hat and I am like, uh, I don't know, 5'10", something like that. So, uh, four wheel drive works on this car, you know, neutral, high and all that, and hub locks and transfer box, all that works. So, uh, we're not gonna go into really off-roading this thing, but it does work, so test it. Sunroof. Automatic, works. Oh, Christ, there it is. Open and boring. And up, okay. 
So, uh, talking about the engine, uh, if you live in the hilly areas and you do not have an intercooler, uh, you need to install the exhaust gas temperature gauge, uh, which very nicely will fit right here. So basically you take off this thing with two screws, throw it away, throw this uh, temperature meter. It doesn't show accurate temperature anyway. Uh, you do a bezel. There is a good write-up on the IH mod. Uh, there's this guy that did it very nicely. You install three gauges, uh, exhaust, gas temperature, boost, and coolant. Uh, and uh, that's what I would do. That's what I would do. Everything else is very nice. Uh, steering wheel's custom, straight from Japan, like, uh, uh, how much was it, like 500 bucks shipped. Floor mats, uh, as you noticed, I have a rubber floor mat and the other ones are not. And the uh, original floor mat is in the back with a second uh, rubber mat for the passenger, brand new. Uh, bought it from Japan. They don't, could not find an automatic version, so I bought a manual one, so it slightly doesn't fit around food rest. $250 for two mats, how about that? Uh, brand new, um, I really like those. Um, everything else feels good, nice and roomy, very comfy, plenty of room, amazing visibility. Uh, seats are really nice. Nice and supportive. Uh, not all the Land Cruiser 70 came with the seats. Some guys will kill for it. Next thing you know, your truck is stripped from seats if you go on a Land Cruiser adventure tour. So watch out for suspicious activity. Uh, now we're going to go ahead and uh, show you uh, what's going on uh, in the back. Foot up, hand up. There you go. Very nice and handy. Again, I'm sitting, and I like to sit in Formula One style position. You know, I don't like to sit like this. I'm sitting very comfortably to the front. And not only I have proper three point seat belts, but I also have reclining seats. So I can be really comfortable down here, really nice. And the best part about the third row has reclining seats too. So uh, uh, that's very nice, beautiful interior, Alcantara, uh, very nice. Most of the smashes are sagging, like spaniel ears. Uh, by the time the car reaches 28 years old, these are not. I don't know what happens to other vehicles, but not to this one. Uh, it's very nice and clean. Floor mat is nice and clean. When I was shopping for rubber floor mats, I could only find uh, the front two, so I bought them. Yes, they were expensive. So uh, now what we're going to do is, um, uh, basically I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, jump in towards the back and show you what's going on in the third row. So now we're going to show you how comfortable the mother-in-law seat is right there in the back. So the way you enter it, uh, this one's already lowered. Sometimes they're up. So you gotta pull it down or remove it for it to flip and not to catch the front seat. I like to just reach down and move this guy a little bit or even all the way forward. One finger down, one finger, boom, up. Here I come. So you come here. Your headrest right here, you install it ahead of time. Lift the seat, seat down. Uh, they're reclined, reclinable as well. So here I am. Uh, let's see how much room I have. Actually, not that bad. For a mother in law, yeah. And just in case if she doesn't like ACDC, she has some rock for fast gate right here, six and a half. Pointing on the side, left and right. Highway to hell. Yeah. <laughs> Lift this up. Let him a little bit recline. Mother-in-law will be nice. 
rolling nice with some music. It's not bad, you know, it's pretty good. Actually, this truck is just a little roomier than the uh, 4Runner known in the United States. It's called a uh, Hilux Surf in Japan, which actually in a later year came with an intercooler. You know that uh, real nice fake uh, hood that you have on SR5s? Well, that hood is from a turbo diesel intercooled model in Japan. Yeah, yeah. here you get fake over there, a real deal. So uh, that's a fact. You know, there you go. Same story. Lift it up. Oop. And exit away. All right, folks. Let's see what's going on in the trunk. First, we get some fingerprints off. That's the way I like it. Open it up. And here's the mother-in-law bench I was sitting just a minute ago. So how would you address all this situation? First things first, pop this, put down here. Little lever on the side, one finger operation. One finger. And now it requires some muscle. Up. There's a little pocket right here for this latch to go in once you have it out. And that's where you put it. Put it in nicely like that. Tuck it in and then close the seat. So uh, I've had some with broken latches because morons leave it like that and they close it right on top of it. Oh, it doesn't close. <laughs> well. There you go, so you lift one, same way. You lift two. Carpet is in excellent condition. This stainless bar requires some polishing, more or less. Uh, but it's it's in acceptable shape. You know, gotta leave some work to do for a new owner. New proud owner. All right, we'll lift this up, lift this up. Nice piece of wood, kind of stained too. There you go. Old lugs for you, just in case if you want them. I put a real nice stainless steel cap. General Motors original lugs. They're the only ones that look good and fit Toyota. Very nice mat, indeed. All original. Uh, here's another thing. Power service diesel clean products. I don't have to talk here for a long, long time. You see this Cummins emblem right here? Cummins? That means something, a thing or two. Uh, what it should mean for you is that this products increase cetane, which means increase the speed of combustion. It doesn't burn as slow in the cylinder and it decreases the gas temperature by a great margin. Uh, so I run this every time and everywhere and I suggest you do. Uh, you will get this, whatever is left in there, uh, so you know what to buy. But that is very important on all the diesels to run something like that. Uh, the car instantly becomes more responsive quicker and the gas temperature goes down by great margin. So, uh, uh, folks, that's it. This is going to uh, conclude our review. And uh, basically all this car needs is a new and a very proud owner. All right, folks. Let's take this thing for a spin. First of all, I'd like to show you how to start a Land Cruiser. Um, there's a uh, glow plug system, which is a double voltage. It starts from uh, 11 volts, then drop to six. Uh, you can hear both relays kicking in. The first one will kick in at 11, the second one will kick in at 12. And then the beep, distinctive beep, will indicate that uh, the glow cycle is open, I mean closed. 
ended. So that's what we're going to do. We're gonna turn the ignition. First click went on, waiting. Second click went out. Just like that. Starts just like that. Morning, not morning, cold, hot. I mean, it doesn't really get too cold in Florida, but that's how you do it. Uh, well, let's talk about interior for a little bit. Uh, what we have is a, uh, looking right at me, this beautiful steering wheel, bought it in Japan. Land Cruiser 70 never had wooden steering wheels. This is done by Japanese craftsmen black wood not the aqua print very important trimmed in nice color matching leather um, cost me I think something like 500 bucks plus shipping for this steering wheel I really really love it it is beautiful it makes it look really nice um, another thing that is not so to say factory is the radio uh, there is a story behind this radio and I'm going to tell it to you right now. The original radio comes in in a um, dual uh, single DIN units. So the upper one is the CD, the lower one is the radio. It only goes up to 89.9 megahertz. It's because after that Japanese starts receiving their uh, TV signal. Uh, so 89.9, so the only thing you can catch is some jazz and bunch of Christian uh, amazing stuff um, and um, it's useless it's useless it's it's low wattage it's POS basically I threw it away you know I mean, it's in the dumpster I, I didn't even want to put it on the shelf it just went directly <laughs> so talking about this radio this particular radio is designed for British market since they ride drive on the right hand side the reason for that is the volume is on the right of it, okay? It's not over here, it's over here. Um, very nice units, it's a Hi-Fi Clarion from the late 90s. Uh, it's not a POS uh, that you buy now. Um, you cannot buy a good uh, Hi-Fi radio anymore uh, unless it's a Pioneer and it costs thousand dollars. Uh, Alpine quit making it because there is no need for it. Every Hyundai sounds decent nowadays. Um, uh, so um, I found this radio in England. It came to me uh, broken. I mailed it to Moscow to this real good guy. He's a pro. He fixed it, restored it, everything. Every little function works. Uh, the broken backlight was broken. There is a diode that goes bad in them. They're known for it. So he replaced it with a Russian made diode <coughs> No mass anymore. So I sent and mailed it back to me um, This is a processor It's got a digital sound processor in there uh, Which indicates it's a hi-fi unit uh, It's got an equalizer and it's got, um, what is that, hold on, digital processor equalizer, oh, and a built-in crossover, which also indicates it's a hi-fi unit. So, uh, interior-wise, I put this Broadway mirror uh, from uh, the years of important cars from Japan. I uh, made a little collection, um, and I put this on here, it gives you a real nice, view from the back uh, Land Cruiser mirrors are outstanding they give you so much visibility they're nice and large kind of truck like you know feel oh, nice good throttle response so uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and do a little uh, test drive but before the test drive let's talk about interior a little bit more uh, the hood liner is in excellent condition uh, it's really really nice uh, it doesn't need any cleaning. Um, it doesn't look like it needs any cleaning. I'm sure there, there might be some dust, but I was pretty afraid to start cleaning it because chances you might uh, 
destroyed and you know old rule if it's if it ain't broke don't fix it so it's beautiful real nice doesn't need any cleaning you want to try to clean it be prepared for consequences but it's everything's perfect uh, dash is really nice it doesn't have any grease any grease shine uh, from uh, this car is what 92 2020 it's about 28 years old for 28 years nobody came in here like this ah where should I unleash the grease and and soak your interior <laughs> nobody nobody ever done it it's it's really nice and flat everything the doors look how flat that is it's really nice the seats are real good it's Alcantara the whole interior is in, covered in fake suede it's called Alcantara a fancy word for it normal word would be fake suede so um, back of the seats front of the seats door cards third row the whole nine yards covered in Alcantara so again this got a little nice bolster support right here they move as you can see in and out if you're a little fat you turn forward if you're a little medium like me turn a little back when my skinny wife sits here he turns it more she probably doesn't even know about it but anyway uh, and then we got a real nice back support here there's a little button and there's a vacuum device that works gives you real nice back support and it works I sit comfortably real nice uh, let me get my bikini shorts down a little bit so uh, you see nice real nice sitting position you can see the little bit upper higher like this if you like more straight like to be slightly laid back right about here bring the wheel down and there you go so uh, um, here is real nice I don't see any scratches any of that so let's go ahead and uh, give this car a little bit of throttle So let's see how we hear exhaust from uh, our operator's seating position. I'm gonna pop his window, close mine for now. We're the friends at Ace Cafe, so we can drive on the grass, do burnouts, whatever, you know. Florida is 0.08 back and every time there is lunch time we try to exercise that low right here Ace Cafe Orlando with some nice fresh beer all right so uh, suspension of this car is like new there is no play no jiggle no wiggle everything is in new condition uh, let's talk about transmission for a second. It's a 340 tranny with a electronic control. Yep, look at that. You'll probably see it last time in your life. So uh, let's make a right turn. We're gonna go on the interstate and show you how it performs on the highway. I don't like about Land Cruiser 80 is because uh, their training because it's a full time and the early version had a solid diff in the center and every time you give it some throttle and let go of the throttle that thing would like kick you in boom everything would be shaking so um, you know and all that play from all the differentials made it like a really clunky noise you know the 80 owners you know what I mean this doesn't have that first of all it's got some electronic control uh, like a power mode and a normal mode and a power mode I kind of like it in town in the power mode it just brings uh, the RPM a little higher since it's a small diesel uh, let's see if we can uh, pass this Hyundai on the right to the off-ramp let's see if we can kill him 
doing a little drag race. Four cylinder diesel in action. On the boost. Ah, uh, there's a Ford with turbo. So we didn't, I mean, we passed it on there. Good. So yeah, I like to keep it in the power mode. And uh, this tranny is a little bit better. It never kicks you, kicks you. Like, you know, I'm 3,000, I let go of the gas. It never does the third gear or fourth gear or overdrive. It never, like, kick you in like the 80 does. So and that gives it a, a lot, a lot better ride. It's a lot softer shifting. This thing shifts super soft. Right now we're in third gear. Just a little bit of throttle. And it drops in real quick, about 3,100. Like, really nice, smooth. You don't you barely feel any shifts it's very very nice for the car that is 28 years old about to be classic in two years very straight tracking alignment is done on this car uh, I try to put the wheel as straight as possible when on the highway I like to use the sport mode on the suspension so you click that on and it becomes considerably stiffer just because it gives a little better steering response, I like to use a sport mode. Where in town, I use soft mode. So we're on Interstate 4. Let me bring it up to 60. We're about 60, 2200 RPM. Our temperature is in the uh, below the first quarter. So this thing dialed in really nice. Uh, let's turn some AC on for some cold air. Very solid feel, suspension solid. As you can see, I'm only operating with just one hand. And bring it down here, just bring the wheel down a little bit. Catch the wheel on the bottom. There is no play on the steering wheel whatsoever. It's very straight. Tracking nice. Very nice daily driver. My kids love this truck, man. They love it. They ride in the back seat. They ride in their child seat in the, in the second row to school. Sometimes they take them around in the back seat around the neighborhood. They love it. They're like Papa, which car are we gonna drive? Your truck or mom's car? You know, they love it. So it's very nice. And uh, in Florida here, uh, we have a big uh, Hispanic community, and they know what this is. Man, you don't drive on the tent without attention. This thing gets so much attention and it looks really good, you know. It looks like it's got presence, it's got style. It looks like during the time when it was produced, they ought to have bowls to make something like this with Ricardo like seats with a manly interior, you know, and a good quality. Everything's nice and soft. I mean, the dash is metal, but anyway, you know, they put a splash of luxury to this car so uh, uh, full electric everything electric power locks power sunroof that works um, they're really nice our temperature is about one quarter from the bottom and we're on the interstate I can go there but I don't really want to about to hit some traffic AC is nice and cold. There you go. So it drives nice on the highway. Its uh, best speed is about 120 kilometers per hour. Uh, you don't really go and want to go any quicker than that, just because it's a small engine load it with uh, extra fuel and make that head hot without an intercooler so uh, we're gonna exit and I want to demonstrate how well it brakes again just hold the wheel from the back with a couple of fingers let's bring it up to 60 now more or less uh, it's 50 miles an hour here I am braking vibration no pulsation look at that it doesn't pull anywhere there we go we're stopping so uh, yeah, I got a green light very comfy ride 
seating position is excellent. You see, really nice and high, and I'm, I'm comfortable. And you see everything around very nicely. Uh, and the bar indicates corners of the truck really, really nice. So, which means if you're hitting something or touching with the bar, most likely you're touching with your uh, plastic cap of the front bumper. Um, what else? Um, interior is in excellent condition. Um, carpet is in excellent condition. The floor mats are really pretty much in new condition. Just the driver has very, very slight wear, but nothing major. After the uh, EGR and the throttle butterfly valves delete, this truck gained a lot of pickup from the get-go and uh, actually a lot of acceleration pickup as well and again I'm driving right now no hassle at all we're in traffic with modern cars it does really good if you want to go quick you can go quick if you want to go slow you go slow um, I'm in uh, somebody from Mercedes uh, Benz Club over Orlando driven this car John he has a W126 chassis diesel and in line uh, five or six, I'm not sure. And he's got the inline six OM606 uh, non turbo W124, and he'd driven this car and he was very impressed. He was very impressed. He said that it probably is quicker than his Mercedes diesels of the era. So uh, I really like the, the way Tranny works. It drops down the gear so smooth. Very straight, um, you know. Every time I go to alignment, I position the steering wheel myself. I don't let anybody do it. I dial in it myself. So what else? Um, fog lights um, connected to the switch right here, factory. That's a factory uh, a dealer installed option. Koito fog lights from Toyota catalog, off, on. Uh, rear wiper right here, inter, inter, intermittent or full on. And the rear heater, everything works. Uh, clock, and it's got a stopwatch. I don't know why, but it's got a stopwatch, just in case. So uh, electric mirrors, left and right, really nice. They both work. Go to the other one and adjust that mirror. Really nice mirrors. Very, very nice. not so long ago and uh, there was this Japanese kid who was born in uh, Japan now lives in the US he's 12 and he said that you never see these trucks in Japan uh, pretty much it's like uh, seeing uh, uh, let's say a 1990 Buick or a Cadillac here in Florida you know you just don't see that anymore. Those cars are gone. They're either stored in the garage or in the junkyard. So same thing here. And uh, he was all over this truck. You know, I let him see it. He cranked it up. He loved it. He wanted one when he grows up. And he absolutely loved it, you know. Um, and he said that in Hokkaido, which is a Japanese province, they banned turbo diesel, so no more. Uh, no more turbo diesels in there. Um, that, that's just telling you 
how uh, rare they are on the road in Japan and how few of them are left. Uh, and especially in this condition, the condition of this truck is amazing. This beauty is gorgeous. Really nice. Sometimes people ask me how hard it is to drive on the right hand side. I mean, if you know how to drive, it doesn't matter really. Right, left, center, upside down, you know. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, I kind of like it, you know, for a special vehicle like this because uh, it gives it a little bit more charm uh, to drive on the right because it's genuine. Initially, this vehicle was designed to be right hand drive and then later converted to left hand drive. Uh, pretty much just like Mercedes Benz, they designed it as a left hand drive vehicle and then they converted it to right hand drive. For other countries so it's genuine it's authentic um, this particular model uh, equipped being the EX uh, which is the top of the line is equipped with this beautiful seats they're also sprung assist for the weight you can adjust your weight dial it in I dial it in a little bit lighter just because I want it to work a little bit more than if I put my real weight it'll be really stiff work only real heavy bumps uh, so I put it in like uh, a little bit lighter and the seat works real good So you find that balance between being stiff and before it bottoms out uh, And it works really nice uh, Nice and quiet comfy ride exhaust man. It took me a while to dial a while to dial that exhaust in This time it's a magna flow muffler. It's a straight through muffler um, As I said before and it's very quiet it doesn't resonate on the inside at all I'm so happy with it you know it makes just enough rumble on the outside like just enough but it doesn't resonate on the inside it basically has absolutely stock resonance with a massive gains of cooling down that turbo uh, because basically what we have is a straight bite out through a straight through you can see through that magna flow muffler like it's a scope uh, so that's what we have we have a straight through exhaust uh, through a magna flow and it doesn't resonate amazing I love it it's really nice very nice stainless stainless muffler high quality made in USA uh, so uh, <clears throat> yeah basically the ideas behind that muffler is to get the turbo gases out as quick as possible as quick as efficient and as quick as possible so the turbo the hot side stays as cool as possible um, and I'm very happy with the setup it's it's great it's great you cannot tell that it's not stock while you sit inside so uh, else we can talk about the gauges everything works everything smooth nothing jumping or jiggling wiggling very nice uh, they're not faded the gauge cluster itself is very nice very clean new there is no dust inside I had Land Cruisers with dust inside yeah, this one's like you can't even tell that there is a piece of plastic in it's just so transparent um, what else uh, e-brake handles very nice most of them are uh, in the condition of uh, as they were chewed on by Chihuahua I don't know what they do to them maybe stroke them or something I don't know but I've seen some brake handles that have been deep in acid. This one is literally brand new, so is the boot. Um, what else? Uh, sometimes in town, I like to disengage overdrive uh, so it wouldn't go in overdrive, give you a little bit more torque, staying in the third gear. It's a three speed automatic. Let's just drive it with the overdrive off right now. Um, what else? Um, 
plastic is very nice seats everything works all the window uh, power windows power door locks everything works another cool thing about it uh, which I like it's got child locks on the doors so if you have kids you pop the door and then you press that little plastic lever in there so your child wouldn't open the door from the inside and that's cool I like that that already thought about it in the 90s it's very neat because I drive my kids in this every day to school for a, quite a while and uh, I always make sure I exercise that thing. Uh, so uh, we're on our way through the town and I'm just showing you how well it drives. Give a little throttle, 2800, and it pulls really good. Very healthy. Very nice. Smooth shifts. Super smooth. That flash on the tranny helping it a lot, you know, and, the, and I like to flush the trainees rather than just drain the pan, you know, it's like a, uh, having a full bucket of crap and then you drain a third of it, mix it with water and then go wash your face. So the transmission feels the same way, if you don't flush it completely, it's kind of like that story with a bucket, it's not happy. Right now it's very happy with valve line, synthetic fluid. It's really smooth, man. It's impressive how nice and smooth this train is. Very impressive. Here comes overdrive. Very smooth indeed. Very nice. So let's turn into the neighborhood and drive around at some lower speeds. Again, here I am braking, no poop whatsoever. You see that? Yep. Back and Arnley brake pads. Okay, let's try to listen to exhaust at the lower speeds. Listen to that. Very good throttle response. Very good. Brakes are really nice, stiff and solid. Uh, double four piston calipers up front, two dual piston calipers in the rear. Disc brakes all around. Now all that drum brake, Land Cruiser 80 stuff that they sold in US. So let's go forward. right there with a uh, bunch of German stuff and zoomed ups and all right all right folks this is going to uh, conclude our uh, little test drive basically all this truck needs is a new proud owner